Hey guys, this is Paul, Inventor 3. Now, it's been a while since I've uh, posted a video here. I just wanna, this is just an update video here of uh, what's been going on with the free energy from air progress. Uh, first I rewired my collector and the plates inside there. I didn't quite have them wired correctly. But anyhow, uh, it didn't, the collector isn't giving me that much more energy there, it seems like. Uh, so uh, I'm going to have to experiment a lot more with different collectors in that. Um, uh, the weather's tr starting to change here. Uh, temperatures are dropping fast. So I concentrated on getting everything inside my lab now. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you got to watch, uh, this is the fourth video of this series this year. Uh, I'll put the links in the, the description below the video for uh, the first three video parts. Um, but anyhow, here's our antenna wire. And I was able to get this now into my laboratory here. And this is the ground. This is just a string here holding this. And I was able to get the ground inside. Let me show you that. Uh, here's another plate I was experimenting with. I uh, used a graphite stick there, put a very light layer of graphite on it, and then coated it. I crushed up a bunch of crystals there in a nice uh, high quality mortar and pestle set. Uh, we make ourselves at my machine shop. <laughs> uh, that set actually sells for 450 bucks, but anyhow, uh, this collector plate. So I crushed up a bunch of quartz crystal into a powder and uh, lightly coated that plate there with the quartz crystal and then I enamel coated it. And it's still not giving me uh, any improved voltage or energy out there. So we're gonna have to keep working on that. Let's see, anyhow. Uh, here's the two wires now coming in my laboratory here. One of them's the antenna and the other one's the ground wire here. Um, this is a new wire I just got recently here. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit there. This is a stranded copper wire and silver coated with a Teflon insulation. So I thought, hmm, that would be really good for the antenna wire. I tried it. I replaced my copper enamel coated wire out there with this wire. And I pretty much had the same voltage. Uh, I really should have checked my current at the same time and I didn't. Uh, so we'll be experimenting more with the antenna and collector more next season. Because uh, like I said, temperatures are dropping. Uh, what the heck is all this here? All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, antenna, let's see what else uh, to inside now. Diodes. Uh, this here is a bunch of circuits now. I finally figured out how to each have each one in a plastic bag just to keep them from touching each other. And uh, I finally figured out the proper way to hook a bunch of these circuits in series, which is. Let me hang out on second here. Uh, let's see, oh, okay, here's our circuit. Um, this is our antenna. This is our ground. Now to connect multiple circuits in series, you just connect this over here. And you can keep going like that. Um, the critical thing I found out about this is however many you put in series every one of the circuits has to have its own antenna uh, it's okay if these they all have to branch into the antenna they all have to be connected to the antenna so if you have a you know a third circuit that's got to connect in too they all got to connect into one antenna. And only one circuit can be grounded. Uh, 
It's strange, but I would think it would be best if the last circuit in a series would be the one grounded, but so far my experiments are showing it doesn't matter which one of these I ground. But the important thing is only one circuit is grounded, all circuits have to tie into one antenna. So that's what's important with that. So we finally you know, are able to multiply our voltage here. Right now, you know, close to 21 volts. It varies a little bit. Uh, I've been experimenting. So there's like six or seven of them. You can see they all tie in to the one antenna. Each one having its own antenna, only one having a ground. <coughs> um, so I've been experimenting with all the capacitors. Uh, as I have in the past too, trying it again. It really doesn't matter if we have one capacitor on each side or if we have two capacitors on each side here. Um, I get the same results. I've tried higher capacitance. Uh, these are uh, 0.1 microfarad and I've tried uh, up higher, uh, 100, uh, uh, what's next, <laughs> nano, pico, nano, or oh, wait, this is 100, anyhow, I tried higher capacitance and the same exact results. I try lower capacitance and I get down to like 100 picofarads and then all of a sudden voltage start, stops uh, uh, it's very bad results then. Uh, but otherwise anything from a hundred picofarads up seems to work the same. Uh, I've also experimented with these electrolytic uh, polarized capacitors before too and uh, not much difference there. I still need to experiment a little more, but uh, still nothing. So, all right, let's see what else, what else, what else. Um, okay, so, hold on, I'm looking at my notes here. So, sometimes, you know, I'll use this by itself, experiment with these circuits. Sometimes I'll tie these into the other circuit down here low voltage oscillator and this is on my previous video where you see 21 LEDs lit um, here's another thing I made up a smiley face <laughs> I'll see about possibly putting a clip of that what it looks like lit up at night um, been experimenting a lot with this coil here well not that much yet um, now these were the original ones and I got better results with this and I got a ferret rod uh, plus some even bigger pieces of ferret rod down inside the core here kind of like uh, this piece over here and it seems like when it's near the center of the coils it's working best uh, without the ferret rod in there uh, these lights won't light up at all uh, again, I got to do more experiments on this and check out the voltage and current and see if we're just transforming something there. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm trying to think about what's going on. Why is it working better with the ferret core? Um, say this is one coil and uh, let's see. It's like a magnet, right? You got the field coming out, electromagnet. Now, if we put another coil here like we're doing, now, let's just uh, erase a little bit of this here. Okay, so now what happens to the field uh, from hundreds of experiments, I would take a good educated guess since these coils are 
bucking, they're uh, uh, repulsive uh, uh, against each other. Um, so I would expect it's kind of squeezing a field out more like that. And then same thing over here. I know I'm shaking a little bit. I'm trying to hold the camera and <laughs> mark. Okay. So now we've we've expanded this field in here. Now I'm thinking, all right, now we're sticking the ferric core inside there. Uh, I'm trying to remember the definition of ferret, ferrite, and what it does. Um, furry magnetic. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, when it's in proximity to a magnetic field, it creates its own opposing magnetic field. Is that what it is? I, I forget. So we got our ferret rod in here, which works best near the center, which would expand these flux lines even farther out. Uh, so I'm trying to understand what's going on there. So now I'm thinking my next experiment, I might have to try this as a pancake coil. So we're manipulating the flux somehow. I don't know. Maybe it's just working as a transformer. But I'll find out. I'll do some more experiments with that. And let's see. What else do I want to talk about? I'm going to be trying. I'm waiting for some, some uh, Scotty diodes to come in the mail. Uh, I got like three or four different types. Scotty, 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 Scotty. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. This planet shucks. What's your schedule, Scotty? You better go to school. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've been spending too many hours alone in the lab here. Uh, so yeah, they're supposed to have even slightly lower voltage drop, so we'll see. Because that's another thing. Uh, you know, I make a lot of these circuits all identical. Uh, yes, these components, you know, have a plus and minus tolerance. But some circuit I might only get 5 volts with. The next one I might get 8 volts with. And I keep thinking, what's the difference? You know, even if I match these capacitors up very close, there's still a difference. And something is telling me it's the diodes. This is, you know, uh, I think about John Hutchison as crystal stacked crystal wafer cells, his best energy cells he's had. And, uh, you know, it all works with this point contact junction barrier. And, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot about that, and he's always mentioning about Cohere's device and uh, uh, detector and uh, uh, cat's whisker detector. And so now I'm thinking, you know, maybe I got to try making a circuit with, you know, find all my best diodes or something and see if we get more energy from them with the lowest voltage drop or what. Um, so that's another thing I got to try out. I even even thinking about making my own diodes. Uh, what else am I going to be trying? Um, well, someone had a good idea of mentioning uh, the antenna wire, nano coating it. Uh, you know, like this Keshi uh, project, uh, GANS technology. You know, nano coated, uh, stick it into fire, carbon. Uh, so anyhow, I'm also going to be trying a different rectifier and multiplier circuit as this one, a different one though. Uh, I'll be trying some neon lamps. Uh, so that's about it guys. That about covers it. Uh, I got all these nice new uh, test leads here. 
on a different subject now. I gotta talk about these test leads for a little bit. Nice short ones, very hard to find. I found them from an electronic place, not even eBay. Really cool, because it's very hard to find these nice little short ones that are like that, well, it's four or six inches or something. So instead of having all these long ones everywhere, it was really good to find those. And you know, I'm gonna make up some of my own of these. You know, these, these dang rubber boots, right? Tell me everybody doesn't have this problem. They keep flipping. You can't turn them. They keep slipping in that boot, right? Plus, they're rusting all the time. They got little tiny thin, thin wires going through there. I'm like, what the heck? You can't find any good jumper wires like this anywhere. I'm like, why don't any of them come with rust proof clips? Galvanized, zinc plating, you know, nickel plated, chrome plated, stainless steel. Oh, but don't get me wrong. If you go to an electronic place or somewhere, you you can find some. Here's some solid copper. You can't find some clips, but you can't find them already with wires. Plus, those wires come apart so easy. I'm always checking continu continuity through them. So this new wire here, I'm gonna make up a, a bunch of clips using that and that. Who else is frustrated with these stupid things that you just keep slipping in your finger and you can't open them? You try so hard. <laughs> so anyhow guys, all right. I'm gonna go break this off now. Uh, so we'll see how it goes and uh, hopefully have another video for you guys real soon here. Take care. Peace out. See ya.